When I first start working on a coin, I have to think of all kinds of ideas, and I do a lot of roughs. I do a lot of rough sketches and a lot of research. It takes a lot of research, depending on the topic. You know, historical topics require quite a bit of research, and, um, and it seems like most of the coins I've done lately have been historically themed. So I start by going on the internet, looking for all kinds of information. I go to the library, I take out many, many books on the subject, I do a lot of reading. Sometimes I collect photos from the internet. The very first one was for the 50th anniversary of the Stratford Festival. And it was a special one for me because um, the models I used were my friend's uh, daughter and soon-to-be son-in-law, and the theme was uh, Romeo and Juliet. So it was Romeo and Juliet in front of the Festival Theatre in Stratford and I used my friend's daughter and it was it was fun to do that. Um, I've I've done so many, I've done 31 coins. I, I just thought about it last night, was counting them all up. Some of the other ones, historical ones, I've done a lot of, lot of coins related to the royal family and different celebrations, the royal wedding with Prince William and, and Kate. It's thrilling, it's really quite thrilling because to think that something that, that I've worked on and, and drawn and it's my art um, is going to survive for <laughs> hundreds of years. I mean, coins are collected and they go on in history. So I, I find that quite a, an honor and a thrill to, to work on something that has that kind of longevity in a way. I have done a number of coins on, uh, lately, in the last four years, since, uh, uh, since the beginning of the, the um, 2014, which was the 100th anniversary of the beginning of, of World War I. And I, I did a couple of coins uh, with John McRae, the writing of the poem in Flanders Fields. So I've been kind of immersed in, in World War I images for quite a few years now. I wanted to include a figure, and I did a number of sketches, including a figure. The helmet laying down symbolizes the end of the war, the, the soldier taking his helmet off. The war is over. Symb symbolically, that I think that says it fairly clearly. The poppy, of course, is a very strong symbol of remembrance and is recognized throughout the world as a symbol of remembrance and connected particularly with World War I. It came back that at the size of the $2 coin, because there's that center thing, it's a very small canvas, if you will. So what you, what you put in there has to be read very clearly. And perhaps the figure was a little bit too complicated for, for the size of the $2 coin. So I, we went through many, many uh, versions of it. So I thought, well, instead of having the soldier laying down his arms, and putting down his rifle with the helmet down like that, that maybe just a single helmet face down, symbolizing the end of the war, and then using the poppy, which is so symbolic of remembrance, and everybody recognizes it immediately, use the poppy as the secondary element. And then, of course, the word armistice, which is the same in English and in French, was very important. So, so the, the design kind of evolved. In the end, the Mint has, which is wonderful, the Mint took that image and they decided they still wanted to use it because they felt it was a powerful image. And so it now has, it's already launched in another $10 silver coin in the Armistice series. So it did eventually get used, but it's much simpler. It doesn't have the, the inner ring the way the $2 has. It's just a simple silver, solid silver coin. and. So it, it works very well in that, at that size in silver. So it was great because then it was, they got to use the, my initial idea, but for a, for a different coin. I enjoy the challenge of, of working in such a small, they say canvas, or small size of a, of a, it's a miniature sculpture really. Actually, that's one thing I have to add is that I, I have recently, in the last seven years, taken up sculpture and uh, never have done it before in my life, and I love it. So I love that chance to imagine something in three dimension. I think that's um, what I enjoy. Oh, and I love the research. I love the research, and I love the idea of um, creating something that I know is gonna be a three dimensional object. 
and thinking back to planes and one and sculpture and how how the how to create a three-dimensional feeling in, in a piece. I imagine what those soldiers must have felt like. I think it means like um, after four long years to have it finally over um, and all the, the really terrible loss and all the young men that or that died. Um, it's, it's a powerful thing to think about, to think of how many people in every town across Canada lost young men. And I guess it's, it's just, we should always remember and hope that it doesn't happen again. I'm sure some people will think about their families. You know, I'm sure people will think about great, great grandfathers or grandfathers or, or great uncles or people that were involved in the, in the war. I think, yeah, people will stop and think and maybe have a little pause and, and give it some consideration or some thought.